Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim, a Canadian girl, and this is episode 5 in my algae series. Today we are looking at red slime algae, so please stay tuned. So here once again is my 150 gallon geophagus aquarium. Red algae is often found in saltwater aquariums. It's actually not a true algae, but classified as a cyanobacteria. Some consider red algae the link between bacteria and algae. Cyanobacteria are one of the oldest life forms on Earth and date back to over 3 billion years. Cyan means blue-green, so even though the name refers to a certain color, this algae presents itself in many colors, from, from blue-green, yellows, reddish-brown, dark purple, even to full black. This algae begins as small patches but grows to spread out in a mat covering everything. Red slime algae is unsightly and very aggressive. These microscopic organisms thrive in underwater environments flourishing where excessive nutrients and poor water conditions exist. Regular routine maintenance practices are crucial to prevent it from taking over your entire aquarium. There are two main causes for the growth of red slime algae in your saltwater aquarium. Improper lighting can lead to many problems with many species of algae. Start by using lights specifically designed for aquarium use, running your lights for 8 to 9 hours a day, and following the basic wattage rule of thumb, which is 3 to 5 watts per gallon of water. Nutrients and nitrates in the form of docks or dissolved organic compounds are the primary source for red slime algae. Phosphates enter your aquarium in a few different ways, using unfiltered tap water and also through an assortment of aquarium products, sea salt mixes, activated carbon, KH buffers and other sources may contain higher than normal concentrations of phosphates. Removing this algae is not difficult. It can be removed by siphoning it off the surfaces and netted from the water column. One solution is using RO water as your makeup water, a high quality sea salt mix and always beware of the content of these elements in aquarium products you plan on using. When docks are allowed to accumulate in any aquarium, it gives rise to nitrates. Nitrates can enter your aquarium in the same way as phosphates, but because nitrates are the final element of the cycling process, it is natural that these levels can increase dramatically when proper maintenance is not followed. Solutions include diligent aquarium maintenance practices, scheduled water changes, regular cleaning of your substrate, cutting back on feeding amounts. Better to feed less more often, giving the inhabitants time to eat up everything between meals. Have a regular schedule for replacing and rejuvenating your filter media and running a protein skimmer will also help. Bio balls are a nitrate factory, so rinsing them well is very important. There are also helpers you can add to your aquarium to consume the algae, such as crabs, shrimp, and other sand sifters. The orange-spotted sleeper goby is considered to be the best of all. Adding a power head to increase water flow will help. Low water movement creates carbon dioxide, exactly what the algae eat. You can also use a number of additives, but you must remember this algae is a bacteria. Using an antibiotic can affect your bacteria column. By killing some off or wiping out your good bacteria completely, caution must be taken when using these products. Although increasing your maintenance practices and using other suggestions mentioned, it will not be a quick fix. However, you will gradually see a decline in the growth of this algae. This algae consumes nitrates, so doing your nitrate testing is 
often not accurate. Your nitrates may be higher than they appear on the tests. This is common with most types of algae. In closing, just to reiterate the solutions, siphon, removing any algae you can see. Have a solid maintenance plan in place. Add water movement and a protein skimmer. Regularly change your filter media. Maintain a higher pH 8.1 to 8.4 with the use of buffers as this will discourage growth of this algae. Replace existing media with a phosphate removing chemical filter media. Most importantly, use a reverse osmosis system for a quality water source. This will be helpful in preventing the buildup of excess minerals. Using RO water from the start will be a great benefit. Dealing with algae is a pain no matter what type it is. It's better to prevent its initial appearance rather than have to fight to get rid of it. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.